Now this is from the 4th of July weekend. We went down to cruise night and it was so hot I thought possibly uh, there wouldn't be much of a cruise night but it was exactly the opposite. They had a record turnout. No idea why. I guess these guys like to sweat as much as the motorcycle guys. I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> but anyway, I always take some pictures of the old Pontiacs for our friend Rich Jackabone who just loves it. Well, he has one. He has a 62. I always try to get some of the pictures of the new cars, the newer cars for our friend John Cafaro, who Buddy Weeder with his Cobra. We have so many friends. John Pothia with his restored 62 Corvette. And as I go through the pictures, I just think, well, you know, someday I'll be too old to ride motorcycles. A lot of people think that day is coming very soon. And then Karen and I have agreed that uh, once I sell off all the motorcycles, it'll be time to relive some part of my childhood. I guess I'll be able to sit up and drive a car. I don't know. I guess we're going to find out. But what makes it pretty cool is you can buy all these retro cars, which uh, like Cantizer has, and not have to go through any of the work. Or if you want to go through the work, like here you go, you know, have fun restoring these old cars, and which I enjoy doing. But I enjoy restoring everything old, old stoves, old kitchens, old houses. I wish I could restore my body. That's the big one. Anyway, every cruise night there's something different. There's, I always think there's about, look at the, look at the windows on this. I always think there's roughly about one third of the people that are there every week. One third you see once and you never see them again. And one third seem to be there once a month or so. So I guess they're involved at all different levels. Look at the windows on this. They're beautiful. And I made a point of looking at the wheels because I had, we had a ride with uh, Joe with his MV Augusta, and I kind of like the way the silver wheels were looking on his bike. In fact, I'm outright jealous. I'm thinking of painting something. I gotta buy another bike so I can paint the wheels silver. And now that Luciano has his 916, I know he's gonna want to paint the wheels, so I figured this would be a good chance to just look around and get some ideas. But it's so eclectic. There's, there's these retro cars, there's the ones that are real, that are the real original thing restored. There's always some little idea I get, and, and I love to talk to people that I've never met before and just get their ideas and get their feedback. And a couple of weeks ago, we spoke for about a half an hour with a gentleman who had a 41 Buick, and he gave us all the ins and outs of restoring his car. He had a bunch of them. Again, looking at the paint on these wheels or the finish, I shouldn't say the paint, they, maybe they're powder coated, maybe they're painted, I don't know. But I did buy some wheel paint, but I, it doesn't look like, it, it has the look of Home Depot paint, I wasn't happy with it, so never painted anything with it, but I'm sure come winter time we're going to be painting, I know if nothing else, Larry's got a bunch of wheels to paint. And some of these old cars, it was so hot, you can see the bikes in the background. Some of these old cars, they just bring back memories. I don't know what there is about it. I just think how cool, how cool it is to just, some of the custom plates, just sit in and close your eyes and pretend it's back in the 50s or the 60s or the 70s or whatever. And I don't think that's a time that's ever coming back to us. I think we have what we have now and we got Maybe you like it, maybe you don't, but, but boy, I know the past was unforgettable. And I wonder if 30, 40 years from now, if people are going to be wanting to relive, uh, you know, 2013 and restore these cars, will get restored. I don't know. There's always the Mustangs, though, and because I worked for Ford basically all of my adult life, and I'm a Ford retiree. I hope these guys keep buying Fords, keep my pension plan solid. And some of the modern motors, some of the retro motors, it's just some of everything. I know John Cafaro's got a car very similar to this, and uh, like I said, I love looking at the motors and some of the tricked out stuff they do to these. Karen really likes some of the interiors. She looks at me and says, you know, when we do our car, are we going to have that kind of interior? And I don't know. We have a sewing machine five years, and I haven't taken it out of the box yet. 
So I don't know. Anyway, but there's always something to get your blood boiling. And it's down at Whiskey Cafe every Saturday night, while the weather permitting, of course. But, but boy, the heat didn't deter the crowd. And of course, my favorite car, the one I would, my first choice for any car would be a 66 Chevy 2 L79 package engine. This one is extremely nice. I think it's got a modified engine in it. And I kiddingly spoke to the guy one night, this is a long time ago, and asked him if he's interested in selling it. He just shrugged, he didn't even, he wouldn't even consider it. And some of the really old things, now when I was, before I had even gotten my license, I had a 53 Mercury and I was <laughs> trying to figure out how they put these holes in the hood, of course. You had a press to do it. But that was always a cool thing, have the hood louvers. This one is really nicely restored. And of course, for Buddy Weeder, for our friend Buddy, the Cobras. The endless supply of Cobras and modified Cobras, ones with tremendous power engines and ones with the, uh, the traditional engine. Some of the guys that I know go to the track, you can tell by, uh, you know, the look of the back tires more than anything else. And John, I try to always get as many of the vets as I can, even if they're not 62s. I know you like these. This one caught my eye now. I don't know what year. Maybe, maybe a, a 62 and I don't know it. But I know you've just gotten done with yours and I really enjoyed the pictures you shared. This every one of these because my my sister and brother-in-law both had this year Corvettes at one time and some of the traditional cars and of course these these are tend to be totally totally stock and then you got the other end of it where they have the guys that have poured a ton of money into the engine some of the guys that have stuff that's a little unusual Different older Toyotas and Datsuns and stuff, Volkswagen Beetles, they tend to congregate on the south end of the parking lot. The Porsche guys that always seem to have something cool going on. The Beetle guys with their, uh, look at this Kawasaki green paint job. There were a lot of bikes. I didn't even bother recording any of the bikes. They were all met. basically uh, ones I had seen 10 times already. Nothing new. I was checking out this, and I was just thinking I had Captain Ellie when I saw this one. I this there's something with everyone when all of a sudden I see a GS, an 81 GS go by. And the guy that owns the bike jumps off the bike, runs over to me and says, Hey Wendy, hey, I miss you, where are you? Hey. And then I realized I had met him up on the mountain a couple of times. And he has other bikes. He's got a Tanari, I know, for that, for sure. But this one is immaculate. And I'm not sure you see it in the pictures, but this one is whistle, whistle, whistle clean. A lot of extra chrome worked on it. The swing arm is chrome. Here's the guy's picture. And, of course, I always try to buy these bikes when I see them, but he wasn't biting. He never even got near the fish hook. Some of the older stuff, and... We're hoping Joe's going to make it down to a uh, cruise night one of these evenings. If you're coming down a cruise night, please let me know. It's free, of course. There's food available, drink available. You get to see a ton of old cars that uh, may spurn some memories. And every once in a while, somebody like this will pull into the parking lot. I had not seen this before. It's obviously a race car that he's driving around on the street. It's got a roll cage. All of, the, all of the things you would do if you were a traditional drag racer of this era. The car was really restored, period, correct. He can see he's even got the pins out of the hood. I think they took the hood off later in the night. And I remember I was involved in drag racing in the time, in the 60s, when the Ram Chargers were big and, of course, the Fords with the Thunderbolt hoods. And I was racing bikes, but I remember hearing these guys go down a strip. It was really cool not to have one of these cars in this condition and and the, the fun is you just be able to drive it around can you imagine 
you pull up to a light with his, uh, you know, no, no cops around and let it rip. But then most of these guys treasure the cars, I notice for a fact. They treasure the cars, they're really not going to be abusing them in any way. And parts every year get harder and harder to find and more expensive. But if that doesn't appeal to you, you can always get a matra, uh, you know, modern replica car and close your eyes and pretend it's an old one, an old Oldsmobile. And some of these that are restored, they are really mint. Really nice. And the, the fuel the engines, well, that brings back memories. Old fuel injection. Anybody my age will remember what that was. Boy, that was, that was one of the big things in that era. Now, I know you can buy these modern crate engines that are dead reliable and they, they get good mileage and they don't make emissions. You just buy them out of the crate and bolt them in and go. And I've spoken it actually to several people about uh, if I ever find one of these 66 Chevy 2s to restore, uh, just get a crate engine for it. And everybody's got their own custom personal little stuff on them. Boy, I remember this too, when when these were in vogue and they had the 427 engine and oh my god, they probably weighed 5,000 pounds, with, especially if it was a convertible. And is there anybody in the world that never had a Volkswagen Beetle? There might, there might be a few, but I'm, I'm not one of them. And if you remember freezing your ass off in a winter, your mind hasn't faded yet. Some nice paintwork, and that is, that is some that is some nice paintwork. I always look at the paintwork. I don't know what this was. It was a restored truck and he had it jacked up in such a way you could look underneath. Maybe he was just, you know, this is displaying it for the other people that are interested in these kind of trucks. Had the original engine. A nice Tempest. One of my favorites because my brother-in-law Roy had this exact car with the two carburetors and oh man, and it was a convertible. It was actually it was a white convertible. It was really nice. But then when we were kids, we dreamed a lot. Didn't have a lot, but it didn't matter because as George Venturini says, dreams are free. And there's always a couple of the the exotic things. As I've said before, there's, there's probably, I like to shoot like a hundred pictures every time I go. There's always something I haven't seen before. As the guys are leaving now, I always stay around to the end. You can see the sun is going down. I like at the very end, the guys with the Cobras and the guys with the, uh, they all try to leave together and go down a block doing burnouts and stuff. Really nice 57. We've, he's there every week. He must be a regular. This guy almost ran me over when I was trying to take a picture. And some of the oddball things, these jacked up Jeeps, and there's usually a few army vehicles, and some of the things is a nice 61. As I said, there's usually something for everybody, and the best news of all, it's free. Whiskey Cafe, Saturday night, the action begins around 4 or 5.